Good evening, Mr. Bond fans, and welcome back to another video looking back at an older video when I was just an aspiring Bond tuber with a crappy camera and Windows Movie Maker. Today we're going to be looking back at my original GoldenEye review video. I felt that this made the most sense given that GoldenEye was the last movie I did a big in-depth review on on this channel, so I figured it'd be interesting to look back to see what I had to say about it. What, what is it now, 12, 13 years ago, maybe? I love the film now, and I loved the film then. I would have probably cited it as being my favorite Bond film way back then, so I'm gonna assume that this is gonna be a very positive video review, but this is one of those that I have absolutely no memory of. I, like, with some of the others that I, like, specific jokes, like, stick out. I remember, like, certain bits from filming or, you know, assembling them. This is one I've got no clue. I'm just assuming that there's gonna be positivity galore. One thing that is kind of interesting, because I have all my old reviews tucked away in, in, in a dark, <laughs> secret corner of my hard drive, there's actually two... Uh, GoldenEye files here. One of them is 16 minutes and 17 seconds long. The other one is 17 minutes and 5 seconds long. I'm going to be watching the 17 minute one for this video. Um, but I, I'm assuming that I had to make edits at some point because YouTube used to have a very strict, I think it was a 15 minute limit. So I, I don't know if the 16 minute one maybe just like snuck by for some reason, but um, you know, if you watch this video back in the day, then maybe there'll be new stuff in it in this 17 minute version for you. Uh, I, I don't know. Okay, here we go, and uh, oh, not wearing a jacket in this one. That's interesting. I, I tend not to go for the full-on jacket when I do videos these days. Uh, I thought I wore one in every single of these older reviews. I don't know, maybe it was maybe I was filming it in summer or something, because there must have been a reason why it's not there. It's probably a hot day. Um, anyway, let's give it a whirl. Hello once again and welcome to another edition of My Weekly Bond. Now, I want you to cast your minds back to several reviews ago, when I said that The Spy Who Loved Me could quite possibly be my favourite James Bond film. Well, if there was ever a film to challenge The Spy Who Loved Me to the title of my favourite Bond film, it would be this. <laughs> this absolutely beautiful, magnificent, almost perfect film. So, with that in mind, don't expect anything but love to come from this review of Pierce Brosnan's first James Bond film, Goldeneye. So after the snazzy new se Well, positivity <laughs> certainly is going to be the order of the day, it seems, but uh, even I am surprised at... Because uh, like I say, when I was doing these older videos, very much influenced by uh, content makers of the time, where it was very popular to sort of be a bit snarky and trash the, whatever the thing is that you're talking about, poke a lot of fun at it, and I'm sure there will be some poking of fun, but... Uh, yeah, I'm surprised that that was as positive an intro as it was, and interesting to say that Spy Love Me used to be such like a close second. I guess at one point I might have cited it as my favourite Bond, I don't know, but uh, these days it's, um, yeah, these days it's not close between the two, I don't think. Um, anyway. CG gun barrel, the film proper begins and we get a pretty awesome stunt to start the movie, with Bond jumping off a dam before we're introduced to our new 007 in the form of Pierce Brosnan. Beg your pardon? Forgot to knock. We're also introduced to another 00 agent here, 006, played by Sean Bean. Though not explicitly stated in the film, the year is actually 1986 and the two are on a mission to blow up some Soviet chemical weapons factory. However, an alarm is triggered and the pair are caught up in a gunfight. So we're introduced to General Orumov, played by Gottfried John. 006 is captured and Bond is ordered to surrender, and as he's doing so, Orumov shoots 006. Okay, now I have a plot point to pick up on here, uh, but first, spoiler alert, actually no, why are you even watching this if you haven't seen the film? Anyway, plot point, why pretend to kill 006, but not just kill Bond while you can? I mean, he was surrendering, wasn't he? Surely if you intend for Bond to die anyway, it doesn't really matter if he sees 006 dying or not, does it? Unless they were all just so sure Bond was going to be his usual awesome self and escape, so they thought they'd better cover themselves. Anyway, yes, of course, Bond escapes and takes control of a plane, flying away as the plant explodes. I'd also like to know how Bond went from this location to this location, which is clearly on top of the mountains after he bungee jumps down from that giant dam, but... Actually, no, why am I nitpicking one of my favourite films in the series? 
We get a shiny new CG title sequence from Daniel Kleinman, who is absolutely wonderful at these title sequences, I must add, before we jump back into the film, nine years later, as we see Bond engaging in one of his favourite pastimes. The DB5's back! Hooray! After the events of Licence to Kill, Bond is being evaluated by a woman called Caroline in order to assess whether or not he is fit to return to duty. However, Bond gets caught up in a little race with this saucy woman played by Famke Janssen. Saucy Bond bumps woman. into her later at a Monte Carlo casino where the two exchange introductions. The name's Bond. James Bond. Xenia Sergeyevna Onatop. Onatop? Onatop. Onatop? Well, that name was definitely in the suggested by Brow Rays. Bond I wondered why I was so close to the camera then. <laughs> suspicious relationship with a Canadian Navy Admiral. Bond gets some snaps, and then we get a scene that always makes me feel like I should excuse myself from the room. <laughs> True reaction. That, that is often how I feel <laughs> when I'm watching this sequence, even when I'm alone. <laughs> hmm. Zenya kills the Admiral with her thighs in order to steal his identity so that she and Orimov can steal a helicopter that can withstand an electromagnetic pulse. They fly the helicopter to a bunker in Sevenaya where we meet this film's Bond girl in the form of Natalia Simonova played by Isabella Skorupka. I'll say here that I Skorupka. bloody love Natalia and that she is my favourite Bond girl of all time and I'll uh, explain why a little later. It's also here that we're introduced to this film's, uh, twat, in the form of Boris Grishenko, <laughs> played wonderfully by Alan Cumming. He wouldn't know a woman if one came up and sat on his head. I don't mean to laugh at my old, old, my, my old, uh, jokes, but, uh, that just surprised even me. I was not expecting that. Boris enjoys hacking and playing word games with passwords. All right. What's the password? I'm not going to tell you. Okay. Let me guess. It's not in front of me. Mm -mm. You sit on it, but you can't take it with you. Well, that's chair then, obviously. I mean, yeah, look, he even types in five characters. Hmm. Yeah, that's chair. Hmm. Well, I'm sure that information will come in handy for Natalia later on. Boris goes outside for a fag as Zenya and Orimov arrive. Zenya murders everyone at the complex, except Natalia who had the good fortune to have a caffeine craving at that moment, before the pair steal the control disc for a pair of golden eye satellite weapons, programming one of them to explode over the Savanaya facility before fleeing in the helicopter. Meanwhile, back in London, we're introduced to our new money penny played by Samantha Bond, who is actually wonderful in the part, and runs a close second to Lois Maxwell for me. And this Miss Moneypenny is clearly a woman of the 90s. As far as I can remember, James, you've never had me. Hope springs eternal. You know, this sort of behaviour could qualify as sexual harassment. FINALLY! Thank God someone finally blurted it out! Oh my God, it took 17 films for one woman to come forward with that. Oh, nice one, Money Penny. <laughs> it's also here that we're introduced to a new, and so far best, Bill Tainer in the form of Michael Kitchen, who brings an astonishing amount of personality to a really small role. Tainer. I used to pronounce Bill Tanner's name as Bill Tainer for some reason, which completely goes against my northern accent, where I would have thought that I would go for, you know, Tanner with the, the A sound uh, over Tainer. Um, I think it's because I misheard there's a bit in The World Is Not Enough where Brosnan calls, like, Tanner um, over, uh, and he says, sort of like, Tanner! And for some reason, I always heard that as Tainer! And it, I, I don't know why it stuck with me like that, but it was only like when I was making these videos and then people were commenting like, Kevin, you know you're pronouncing that name wrong, <laughs> that I was like, looked into it a bit more. <laughs> and our new M played by Judy Dench. Seems your hunch was right, 007. It's too bad the evil queen of numbers wouldn't let you play it. You were saying? No, no, I was just, uh, just, um... Good. Because if I want sarcasm, Mr. Tanner, I'll talk to my children. Thank you very much. The trio watch as the Seven Naya facility is wiped from their satellite readings as it's hit by an electromagnetic pulse from one of the GoldenEye satellites going off, which leads to Natalia's day from hell, but she makes that alive. Bond is then assigned to investigate in a brilliant scene between our new Bond and our new M. You don't like me, Bond. You don't like my methods. You think I'm an accountant. 
No wonder I had to cut down the thing for um, YouTube running length. These clips run for a bit long. <laughs> I think you're a sexist, misogynist dinosaur. Thank you, Dame Judy. It's about time someone said that. <laughs> we get a scene of Orumov learning of the Savanaya survivor, and then we get a good old-fashioned Q scene with Desmond Llewellyn returning once again. Morning, Q. Sorry about the leg. Huh. Skiing? Hunting. First, your new car. BMW. Agile five forward gear. Good lord, yeah, really letting the clips run. Self-destruct system, and naturally, all the usual refinements. Now, I'm gonna make the same joke about the Stinger missiles. <laughs> I feel like it's coming. God, that's a lovely car. Gadget laden too. I bet we're in for an awesome vehicle chase sequence later on in the film. Just you wait. So with all his gadgets in tow, Bond heads to St. Petersburg to meet CIA agent Jack Wade, played by Joe Don Baker, who played a villain in The Living Daylights, but he's much better suited to this kind of character. Hey Bond, you doing any gardening? Gardening? Huh? What? Meanwhile, Natalia manages to contact Boris and arranges to meet him in St. Petersburg, but of course he betrays her. And, uh, uh, meanwhile, again, Bond meets with Valentin Sokovsky, a Russian mafia head played by Robbie Coltrane. Bond has a talk with Sokovsky and learns more about the crime syndicate known as Yanis, who Xenia Onotop is suspected to be a member of. Sokovsky arranges for Bond a meeting with Yanis, who gets Xenia to drive him there after fighting her off in a spa. It's here we're introduced to our main villain in the form of da 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 Alec Trebellion. Turns out he faked his death, and he's after revenge on the British government because he's a descendant of two Lien's Cossacks who were betrayed by the British government, which would probably make him old. But uh, never mind. Bond is. I must have had a cold or something when I was recording this because I could just keep hearing <laughs> sniffles. He's tranquilized just before he can shoot Alec and wakes up in the stolen helicopter with a screaming Natalia. Stacey Sutton's screams were annoying. Ugh. The helicopter self-destructs, but Bond and Natalia escape. But then they are arrested by the Russian police, and then a drunk Oromov pops up and frames Bond for the murder of a Russian Minister of Defence. We get a lot of great action here, including Bond driving a tank around, which is pretty fucking awesome. Uh, as he follows a kidnapped Swear Natalia back to Trevelyan's armoured train, Trevelyan then tries to put the moves on Natalia. Taking a leaf out of Bond's book, eh, Trevelyan? Kiss the girl until she likes it? Huh. <laughs> That's a throwback to a joke I made in the Thunderball review. Anyway, in summary, Bond halts the train with the tank, Oromov is killed, Trevelyan and Xenia escape, and the train is set to blow up while Natalia tries to find out where the bad guys are heading by hacking Boris's password. It's chair. <laughs> it's definitely chair. It's chair. It's five characters. You sit on it, but you can't take it with you. It is a chair. <laughs> chair. What else do you call your bottle? I mean, it's not a great riddle or anything, because you can technically take chairs places with you. But still, it's chair. What? It's Boris' password. He plays word games. It's what I sit on, but I don't take it with me. Chair. Thank you, James! Anyway, Natalia finds out the villains are heading to Cuba, and after we have one of my favourite shots of the whole series... I do love that shot to this day. We follow our heroes to Cuba. Ah, oh, the Z3. Time for the vehicle chase, I assume. It's about time Bond put those Stinger missiles to good use. So Jack Wade pops up again and trades his plane for the Z3. What? The, what? 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 The, no, wait! Wait, we haven't had a chance to use any of the gadgets yet! Wait, Wade, come back! The Stinger missiles! Ugh. Oh well, the film has been pretty amazing up until this point, so I... I guess I can let it off this one little thing, and I... I do suppose that tank chase was pretty epic. Anyway, the next day Bond and Natalia go looking for Alex's satellite uh, that he's using to control the GoldenEye satellite. But they're shot down and confronted by Xenia and we get an awesome final showdown between Bond and Onotop before showdown. she is ultimately crushed to death. She always did enjoy a good squeeze. Bond and Natalia then see a lake being drained of water and covering the satellite dish. They infiltrate the base where Bond is captured and Alec reveals his dastardly plan to steal all the money from the Bank of England before erasing all of its financial records with the remaining GoldenEye satellite, thus concealing his crime and destroying the British economy. Trevelyan uh, intersperses this revelation with various insults and jibes. 
I might as well ask you if all the vodka martinis ever silenced the screams of all the men you've killed. Yeah. What if you find forgiveness in the arms of all those willing women for all the dead ones you failed to protect? Ooh, Alec! While all this was going what? on, Natalia was reprogramming the satellite to destroy itself. This pisses off Boris, who must then try to crack Natalia's codes while twiddling and clicking Bond's grenade pen that goes off if it's clicked three times. Uh, uh, or is that four? Oh no, wait, it's a, it's a four second delay, but a five second click. Oh, wait a minute. Oh wait, how many times has he clicked it? Is that uh, two or... Uh, Letting this play. Okay, that's two. Um, oh no, wait, was that another one? Uh, oh, uh, that's well, that's five seconds. No, no, wait, how many seconds was it? No, no, no. Oh, uh, three clicks. Uh, oh, oh no, how many, how many clicks have been? So been I'm really dragging this out for some reason. Have gone by. Uh, oh, Tell my God, oh, this is so confusing. Give me the cards, Natalia. Give them to me. Uh, whatever, anyway, yeah, uh, the explosion, Bond and Natalia escape, the satellite blows up, Boris is upset, Bond and Trevelyan have an <laughs> amazing, <laughs> brutal fight, uh, Natalia hijacks the helicopter, Bond drops Trevelyan to his death, the whole place blows up, killing everyone except for Boris, who gets uh, a very, very silly death in the Just end. Just rushing Bond through Bond and Natalia then drop down and start making out before Wade and the Marines turn up and fly them away to safety. I must have been looking at the editing software at that time, being <laughs> like, oh yeah, running out of time, uh, need to hurry up. Oh, there's no one within 25 miles, believe me. Baby? Okay, I know I shouldn't be really hung up on this, but that one line sticks out so much to me. So, I talked about this in my in-depth review as well, I think? Did I? I? I definitely talked about it recently. It might have well have been with a video uh, that I did with David where we talked about Goldeneye. Uh, that Bond says, I, I always heard it as Bond saying baby there at the end. If you put the subtitles on on the Blu-ray, he says believe me rather than baby. And I think I must have just misheard it. So uh, I don't know how long I want to rant about this for. But uh, it, it's I'm probably not ranting about anything that actually exists. I mean, Bond, Bond doesn't say that. Okay, no, he, no he one shouldn't doesn't. be really hung up on Bond calling Natalia baby, but every single time I watch this film, it really does stick out. I mean, it's just so out of character. I know this is Bond of the 90s and whatever, but it just doesn't feel right. It just doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel in character. Oh, yeah, by the way, um, that's the film over with. Uh, don't stick around for the end credits, whatever you do, because there's an incredibly shit and ear rapey song that plays over the end of this perfectly magnificent film. Ear rapey. Wow. <laughs> God. Okay, I know I fawned and gushed over Goldfinger and Spyro Love Me, but Goldeneye. Goldeneye is probably my favourite James Bond film, and to be honest, I'd probably put it in my top 10 films of all time ranking. It's just so damn good. Dalton's films, though enjoyable, just felt like a bit of a hangover from the Roger Moore period. They felt a bit tired, a bit lacklustre, but Goldeneye is definitely where the series found itself again. Firstly, Pierce Brosnan is absolutely terrific, and I know he's gone on to be something of a controversial figure amongst Bond fans, but I honestly just love the guy as Bond, and... You know, that's really interesting, actually, because I've talked about this recently, uh, the whole idea of a Brosnaissance of Pierce Brosnan's Bond being re-evaluated um, and, and praised in a similar way to what Timothy Dalton um, had received recently. I always thought of the, uh, the Pierce Brosnan bashing as being a bit more of a recent thing, I guess, but whenever this video was made, like, I guess 2011... Yeah, 2011. Um, God, it must have already been... I guess we were still within t 10 years of Dine of the Day, and that film was getting bashed online quite a lot around that time, so, um... Wow, yeah, we are well overdue a Brosnaissance, I feel. 
You know what? I think he's the best James Bond. Of course, I still love Roger Moore. Roger Moore is my favourite James Bond, but I think Pierce Brosnan is the best James Bond. I think he embodies everything about the cinematic Bond. I, I, I just think he's terrific. He, he combines everything that was so good about the previous Bonds and adds in his own sort of personality into the mix. It just makes him very likeable and compelling. I really I believe by a lot that of this. this guy is James Bond up on screen. I can't praise the supporting cast enough either, actually. Isabella Skorupko as Natalia is easily my favourite Bond girl. She's the most beautiful, she's smart, she's relevant, she's played brilliantly, I could go on forever. I fucking love Natalia. One of the main reasons why I love this film so much is that it has quite possibly one of the best ensembles of villains from any film ever. Indeed, I don't think there's really a weak link in the main bunch. Sean Bean as Alec is terrific. Famke Janssen as Xenia makes for one of my favourite villains of the whole series. Alan Cumming as a laugh as Boris. And Gottfried John as Orumov is one of the most compelling and underrated performances in a James Bond film. Honestly, he's so overlooked. Everyone else still stand by so much of this. Trainers Valentin Sukovsky makes my favourite Bond male ally. Judy Dench makes my favourite M. Michael Kitchen makes my favourite Bill Tanner. Samantha Bond Tanner. comes close to besting Lois Maxwell for me. Joe Don Baker is much better cast here than in The Living Daylights, and Desmond Llewellyn plays Q better than ever. The action scenes are brilliant and relevant. It's shot gorgeously. The sets are excellent. Okay, just take it for granted. I Can't love I everything Tanner about this film, though. except for the baby thing at the end. And I've always been a bit iffy on the Eric Serra score, actually. It just doesn't feel quite Bond enough. But at the same time, it really does suit the film, so I don't know. Uh, on that note, I think this film really kind of sticks out from the other films in the series. It's, it's got its kind of own unique look. I don't think any of the others have quite been able to match that look. I don't even know what it is. It's like, I, it's not even the director, Martin Campbell, did uh, Casino Royale, but even that looked very different to Goldeneye. I'm not sure what it is. It's just different, but unique and brilliant. I'd credit much of the success of this film to writer Bruce Feirstein and director Martin Campbell, as both seem to really understand what makes a compelling and interesting Bond film that, while standing out for its excellence, still feels like part of a larger series. It just all works so brilliantly in this film. Anyway, yes, tune in next week when we return for Pierce Brosnan's second Bond outing, and the film that I always seem to refer to as being Brosnan's Octopussy, Tomorrow Never Dies. Well, as expected, that was incredibly positive. Uh, I think this might well be, other than uh, License to Kill, one of the more uh, later on in the run of these original reviews of the films. Uh, so I'm kind of like, oh, that, that one actually, like, I, I didn't notice as many awkward pauses or weird uh, editing choices. I felt like at that point it was like, oh, okay, that, that held up as a video of its time. I, I, I feel somewhat, correct me if I'm wrong, if it was excruciating for you, please do let me know in the comments. And that's funny because an awful lot of those comments, I, you know, and it's funny, a lot, an awful, and it's funny, an awful lot of those comments, I, I still stand by. And it's funny, an awful lot of those comments, I still kind of stand by. I think you can hear me say very similar things to some of that in the bigger, in-depth video that I made recently. So it's, uh, it's kind of interesting as time passes, and yet yeah, I'm still kind of, uh, you know, holding up some of the similar things that I love so much about it. And Gottfried John, you know, just those little things. It's, um, yeah, it's interesting. I think this is the one that has felt most similar to the updated review that I've done. Uh, a lot of comments in that I felt like, oh wow, I could have just <laughs> copied and pasted that and put it in the new in-depth video and it would have still, you know, it would have still been my opinion, you know, praising Gottfried John and, uh, you know, the lack of stinger missiles. I was interested at the end there that I was relatively positive really on the Eric Serra score. Because uh, I definitely, I talked about this in my in-depth review where I kind of went through a bit of like, I used to quite like it and then you know, sort of um, went off it quite a lot after getting involved in some of the forums and stuff and hearing a lot of negativity about it and that kind of became my opinion. But now I'm just kind of like through that and just back to my original kind of like, oh, actually, I kind of like it really uh, for the film. Um... So yeah, I was interested that I didn't dog on that so much. There's still a fair bit of swearing in that and a fair bit of provocative uh, commentary, I will say, uh, particularly regarding some of the gender politics. But um, 
Yeah, I was surprised that I didn't poke fun at <laughs> more of it. Uh, that was a largely incredibly positive, I think that might be the most overwhelmingly positive of these older reviews that I've looked back on so far, so it was interesting. But like I say, I didn't think that that was that bad. Uh, or maybe I'm just becoming too acclimatized to my older self now that I'm beyond the point of cringing. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts on this one in the comment section below. And also below you can click the subscribe and the Mrs. Bell notification button. Stay super up to date on future video uploads that I make on this channel. You can also uh, like this video if you get to do so and follow me on my various other social media pages, links to which are all below. So please do follow me there if you're so inclined. And with all that being said, and until next time Bond fans, so long for now.